Please join me in the call to worship. People of God, we gather today striving to become a community that shows God's love to an often unlovable world. A love that is offered to all unconditionally. A love that feeds the hungry and welcomes the stranger. And a love that shines through us all, allowing us to be the face of Christ in all we do and say. So, come together now in body and spirit as we sing to our merciful God. Gracious loving God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the gifts that you bring, but the doors that you open within our lives. So come and be with us on this day as we come and worship with you and through you, through your son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Good morning and welcome to online worship here at Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church on this wonderful, brisk Sunday morning. If you haven't already done so, I invite you to go to your pantry and maybe get your communion elements so you have them ready for later in the service when we have communion and you can take part in the communion meal. But as we get together on this morning, we continue to worship online, but be with each other through virtual connections. We know that God the Spirit is with us each and every moment. So now as we continue with worship, I invite you to hear God's word. The first part of our scripture lesson this morning comes from Proverbs chapter 5, verse 3 through 12, taken from the Inclusive Bible. Don't be like adulterers, like people who break faith with those who trust them. Their lips drip honey and their words are smoother than oil, but their end is as bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Their feet lead them down to death. Their steps take the road to the grave. They ignore advice on the road to life, and they wander lost and uncomprehending. So hear me well, my children, and listen closely. Don't wander from the word of my mouth. Keep your distance from these people. Don't even approach the door to their house, or you'll surrender your integrity to others and your reputation to the merciless. For then strangers will acquire your wealth, and your labels will enrich someone else's household. All you have in the end are your groans when your body and flesh are wasted. And you say, how I hated my lessons, how I hated to be corrected.
Our scripture lesson continues this morning in Proverbs chapter 5, continuing with verses 13 through 21, taken from the Inclusive Bible. I wouldn't listen to the voice of my teachers, wouldn't pay attention to my instructors. Now I'm all but ruined, and the whole neighborhood is watching. So drink water from your own tap, water that runs from your own faucet. And don't let your river flow into the streets or let just anyone drink from your streams. Let them be for yourself alone and not for strangers. May your fountain flow freely to bless both you and your beloved, someone who loves you and fills you with joy. May your affections always fill you with mutual bliss. May you always delight in your love for each other. Why be infatuated, my children, with people who deceive those who trust them? Why embrace a false-hearted lover? For our ways are always in Yahweh's sight, and God watches our paths. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks be to God. Amen. Come to prayer with me this morning. Gracious and loving God, we come to you this morning thanking you for being within us, allowing doors to open for us within our lives, but also thank you, God, for the closed doors. But God, we are grateful that you are a God of open doors guiding us this morning, knowing when we should go through certain doors in our lives and when we should stay away from those forbidden doors. Allow us to experience the good doors that open of hope and peace, of joy and goodness. I pray that you will come into each of our hearts and souls on this morning as we hear your words. I ask now that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this morning, and the words that come from my mouth, along with the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they ever be acceptable to you. In Christ we pray, amen. Here at Milwaukee MCC, we're in the middle of a sermon series called At the Door because the average person makes about 70 decisions a day in their lives, which we've determined is about 2 million decisions over a lifetime. We've also determined over these last few weeks that a great life is also made up of all the decisions we make in our lifetime. Every day that we stand at the door to a decision, another great decision that we would make, the better we're going to be. But that's difficult mainly because the number of decisions we make on a daily basis are so numerous. Now, those are 70 main decisions a day because according to the Google search, it is estimated that the average adult makes about 35,000 remotely conscious decisions each day. You have to love how Google uses the term remotely conscious, which means the next time your partner or friend or rumor is upset with you about a decision, you can reply, well, I'm pretty sure I was remotely conscious when I made that decision. Think about it for a moment. 35,000 decisions every day. And that's not even counting if you were going to your favorite restaurant and ordering off the menu then that kind of maybe skyrockets it a little bit even more. No wonder decision-making in our lives are so complicated. How do you make 35,000 good decisions every day? Well, first of all, you don't. But second of all, you try to live by this principle. Our lives are marked by the doors we go through, but also the ones that we don't. Your life, my life, 
are marked only by the doors we go through. The decisions we make, but also the doors that we choose not to go through. And there are some doors in life that you should never walk through. There are doors in our lives that look fun, they look exciting, but from a distance, you don't know what they are. And as we get a little closer to those particular doors, we realize that it's a trap. For example, you're a teenager or a young adult, or you just want to try that whatever just once. You're just curious what it would be like only if you did it just this one time. Do you know how many of us have said that over the years? It's a trap. Or an addict that says, I'm just going to have one more drink or one more fix. I'm just going to do this one more time. I've got this under control. It's not a problem for me anymore. It's another trap or a red flag. And pretty soon you're sliding back into that addiction. I'm going to ask you all, is there a door right now in your life that you can sense that might be a trap? Oftentimes we'll give you that sense of intuition. God will give you that warning and says, if you go through that door, you're going to slide. Your relationships, your reputations, your future opportunities, they're going to slide at some point in your life. That is why we need to step back at times and just say, hold up. And it's going to take us to have that ability to say, I'm not going to go through that door. I'm going to take an advanced decision that says, there are certain dirt doors in our life that I'm never going to walk through. Because each of us are marked not only by the doors we walk through, but also by the doors that we won't or don't walk through. That is what the book of Proverbs tells us. And we know Proverbs was written by a man named Solomon. And we know that Solomon was known as one of the wisest men who ever lived. Solomon's decision making was legendary. And this morning, as we heard in Proverbs 5, we hear Solomon writing to his son. He's telling his son about a certain door that he should never walk through. As we've heard in this inclusive Bible translation that don't be adulterers like people who break faith with those who trust them. Their lips drip of honey and their words are smoother than oil. Now another version states it this way, for the lips of the forbidden individual drip like honey. Solomon used the word forbidden. Solomon is saying, Son, there are doors in life that are just forbidden. They're off limits to the followers of Christ and those who want to live a great life. Now, there are multiple forbidden doors, but in this particular instance, Solomon is talking about adultery and that this individual is forbidden, but at the same time, it was very enticing. I guess you could say that I've never seen a forbidden door that at the same time wasn't enticing. I mean, just saying it's forbidden is enough to entice any individual. <clears throat> Solomon continues by telling his son, but their end is a bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Their feet lead them down to death. Their steps take the road to the grave. They ignore advice on the road to life. In other words, Solomon is saying this person is a smooth talker, saying all the right things, getting what they want. Additionally, he is saying that this person is going to make you feel important, desirable, special. And at first, you, you take that to heart, but you have to look at the results. Now, scientific evidence says that when you give to a temptation, your, your brain releases this chemical known as dopamine. 
So when you look at that individual or image or solution, that dopamine is released into your brain, sending these temptations within you. So we see Solomon ending with the words of wisdom to his son, saying all of these individuals that ignore advice on the road to life. And I think what Solomon is saying here is that those who are deceitful, who take revenge or anything to that nature, are pretty much ignoring all odds and steering you into that black hole. And do you think this person cares about you and your path with God? Probably not. People like that do not care about your path to life. However, God does. And we know that God wants to lead you into that path. In fact, God is not trying to restrict you with rules, but is liberating you to life. Which makes me ask you, why do you think God calls lying a forbidden door? It is because God wants to keep you from joys and lying to people? And of course, the answer to that is probably no. But God wants you to be with the people you can trust. Why does God call overspending or going into debt a, for, debt, excuse me, a forbidden door? Is it because God doesn't want you to have nice things? Of course not. God wants you to be free from debt and the burdens that come with that within your life. We have to realize that God is not trying to restrict us with rules, but instead wants to liberate us to live that fulfilled life. With everything that has been happening to us in our lives, there are so many of us that want to take and look at different avenues. There may be some of you with your hand on that doorknob this morning that there's that forbidden door. Your hand is on that doorknob and you're ready to turn it. You might even be trying to convince yourself or just to self-justify why it's going to be okay to turn that doorknob. Even crack the door a little bit. At the same time, as you listen to this message, you might be telling yourself that you be make, may be making one of the worst decisions of your life. You might be even saying to yourself that you may have already fallen through that door. So there are a few ways that you can avoid some of these forbidden doors in your life. And the first one is, don't get near. And this is the one of those things that Solomon teaches us is keeping your way from this individual and do not go near the door of their house. Solomon is saying, don't even, I mean, don't even think about going near that person's house. But our nature of habit is to get close to those forbidden doors and maybe to pull back and think that we should pose the question, why do you even want to try to get close? Solomon is pretty much telling us we are to drink the water from our own tap, the water that runs from our faucet and to not to let the river to flow into the streets and just let anyone drink from it. But to let them be for us alone and not for strangers. Solomon says, may your fountain flow freely to bless you and your beloved, someone who you and fills you with joy. So the second way to avoid some of those forbidden doors is to stay in your own lane. Basically, we're being told to stay in our own lane, to stay focused on the things in our life. Don't drift off track with the things that are in the way. Don't let yourself get distracted from what you're focused on in your life. Especially in the times that we're living in and more so now, we need to keep our focus on our jobs, our families, whatever we may be working on in our lives, not letting ourselves be sidetracked with the temptations of things telling us otherwise. That last thing that we should never do is never ever, ever have a never ever list. We should always have a never ever list in our lives, as Solomon tells us. Solomon's final word to his son is saying, don't be held captive by your own sins because they are the ropes that catch and hold us. And if we let that happen, we will be destroyed and put back all the way. How's your discipline these days in your life? 
especially in these times of COVID. I can tell you for me personally, I've been trying to eat healthy and not gain any more COVID weight that we've all packed on over these last seven months. It's taken a lot of discipline in my life, especially to get up on those Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays at 5 a.m. and to get myself down to the gym with a trainer. It's discipline by putting something off today in order to have something tomorrow. I'm going to tell you that discipline just doesn't work that well when you're in the heat of the moment. This is why we need to make advanced decisions. Thus having that never ever list. So what are some of the things in your life that you would never ever do? Have you ever written those down at some point in your life? What are some of those things that you will never ever do in life? At the same time, there will be some of us that will do some of those never ever things and also wonder, how do I deserve that in my life? Or how do I get back on the right track? <clears throat> I think the best way in wrapping things up this morning was shared in a passage from 1 Corinthians that when you are tempted, God will show you the way so that you will not give into it. Meaning that the next time you start finding yourself with your hand on that doorknob, think about it. Or think about that, what you're doing. So I close by telling you that God shows you a way out to help you refocus on the things in your life because our lives are not only marked by the doors we go through, but by the doors that we don't go through. My continued blessings to each of you this morning, Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church. Amen. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the board and the pastor, I want to welcome you all joining the service today. You know, Reverend Tory talked about forbidden doors in his sermon. Doesn't it seem like the door to the church these days is a forbidden door? We can't go through, we can't participate. But I think even though it may seem like a forbidden door, God is offering us other ways, windows to look through. You can look through the window and participate fully. You can join in all the virtual offerings we have, worship and get togethers and, and other things that we have. You can still share your tithes and your offerings and your gifts with us and with those that you know are, are around us um, through prayers and thoughts and phone calls. It, it might help to know that you are helping to keep us alive by peering through that window, by participating, by giving us your tithes and donations, we are able to keep going. For those of you that do tithe, the tithe report for this quarter is coming out in the mail this week. Also, it's not too late to also donate to the Pastor Appreciation Fund for this month. All these ways you can keep us alive and active and, and kind of help people peer in past that forbidden door. So I say don't think of this as something you can't do. Think of it as God offering other ways to continue to do what we do. And join us in worship and prayer and trying to bring forth Jesus' directive of caring for one another and loving one another. Amen. As we come to God's table this morning, I invite you, if you haven't already done so, to go and get your communion elements to take part in this wonderful meal that is always given to us. But as we come to God's table, that we know that we come to a table that God has provided for us. We know that over and over again that we need that blessed assurance that God provides us in our lives. We know that that night in the upper room that Jesus was to be taken from us, as he gathered with his disciples, he took the bread at the end of the meal, blessed it, and broke it. And as he was passing it to them, he said to take it to eat. For this is my body that has been given for you, but each and every time that you eat from this meal or eat from this bread, do so in remembrance of me. Likewise, at that same meal, Jesus took the cup from the table and blessed it and said that this is the cup of the new covenant of my life that is poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of all sins. But to also drink from this as often as possible and drink of it when you do, remember me. 
So as we come to the table, we take the gifts of the bread and the cup, and we do so as we remember Jesus in our lives. We pray with me. Holy goodness, pour out your spirit of welcome on these gifts of the cup and the bread. The simple gifts that are made sacred by your presence, may the grain which has come to us from the field strengthen your people to go out and serve throughout the world. May the cups which have been filled by the fruit of many vines nourish us with the faith and hope so our hearts will overflow with grace to those who thirst for your presence. And when your people have been gathered together from every corner of creation, we know that we will be with one another, not only by name, but lifting our voices to you, God and community, holy and one, as we seed upon your praises of our hearts. Amen.
another wonderful, great morning of worship, another great day of being together, even though virtually. We have to remember that the doors that we go through are the doors that make who we are, but also the doors that we don't go through make who we are as well. And as we heard earlier, that going through those doors are the gifts that we bring into life. Just because our doors may be closed at the moment, physically to having in-person worship, the doors are still open to this church to have you be a part of us. So as we go out into the world this day and each and every day, we go out into the world through God's tender mercies and love that is given to each and every one of us through God the Creator, God the Savior, and God the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Amen.